Michael Morris. I'm the superintendent of the Amherst Pelham Regional School District, and thank you for watching today. Uh, I'm thrilled to talk math today with two math hey. educator experts. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, Jane from the us. high school, and department chair, and curriculum leader, Tiffany. And so uh, before we get into the, the, uh, the math of it, so to speak, can you just introduce yourself a little more than I did and maybe talk a little bit about how you came to be a math educator? Um, sure. So my name is Jane Muti, and I am math department head at the uh, high school. I teach a variety of classes. Um, as a math educator, I really, I think I was born knowing I wanted to be a teacher, but the math piece came much later. Um, my brother had some special needs, and so trying to figure out how to support him in learning um, in the mathematics was always really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So I think that sort of, I didn't quite go into it right away, but, and diverted myself a little bit, but um, I think I came back to it because really that's what I always wanted to do. That's Thank awesome. You. Yeah, um, so I didn't think that I would become a um, teacher when I was younger. I had many different interests and it was really hard to narrow down on one. Um, but one of the things that I found is that um, all of my part-time jobs sort of led me back to um, cheerleading, coaching, um, tutoring, and, and back into a classroom in some form or another. So it turns out that being in the classroom and working with students and helping others learn is, is really what I like to do. Nice. And just your tip, just a little introduction of who you are, sorry. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> so um, I am the, I'm currently eighth grade teacher for um, Team Bolt at the middle school. Um, we sort of alternate between seventh and eighth grade. Um, so this year I'm teaching um, math eight and um, several sections of that class right now. Um, previously, um, before coming to the middle school, I think seven years ago, I was an elementary school teacher. And so I taught um, elementary, second grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, um, math and science primarily in those areas. And then um, it was an encouragement of someone in this district that said, maybe you should try the middle school. And I got to the middle school and I fell in love. And so here I am. Thank <laughs> nice. you, Tiffany. Um, so I want to note that we're taping this in mid-September, so we are two and a half weeks in, something like that, um, to the school year. And so, um, as we'll talk about later, there's been some changes in the math curriculum, um, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll talk more about that. But separate from the nuts and bolts of, of your day-to-day -day job, what, at a vision level, would you say math education should look like in 2019? Something that we often hear from... Mm -hmm from families and something that, you know, many of us experience who haven't been learning math in a K-12 environment in many years is kind of what we learned, how the way we learn mathematics perhaps is different than the way our children are learning mathematics and, you know, it can lead to a lot of wonderings as to why that is or uh, were my math teachers doing it the wrong way and yeah. all sorts of uh, conversations that go on in many people's homes, particularly in the area of mathematics. And I wondered if either of you could shed a little light on what your vision of what high quality instruction in math uh, looks like at a K-12 or uh, 7 through 12 level uh, and a little bit of why that distinction is of mm -hmm. 2019 versus, I won't mention the year, but year prior. <laughs> um. Do you want to start? Uh, yeah, I think this is a really exciting time to be a student in a math class. Um, there are so many bits of research that um, teachers and just the community in general are aware of now in terms of best ways to learn, you know, being able to explore and test things out and ask questions and discussion being like the foundation of what we do in our math class, which I think is a little bit different from the traditional way that most people experience math, where you just sort of sit there and you do problems and it was about how many you could do rather than the quality of discussion that came out of the problems that you were working on. So um, I think now we really do have a, um, a focus on being able to explore and test and ask questions and be able to justify your thinking more so than just getting an answer right. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, the world has changed, obviously, since I, I was in the math classroom as a student. Um, and just, you know, jobs and careers really are looking for, do you understand? Can you apply? Can you um, problem solve so much that I think in the math classroom, th those are sort of the skills that we need to foster, as well as all the other, you know, procedural fluency, um, you know, but I would like that to come from conceptual understanding. It's not just a rote memorization that mm -hmm. students really 
um, understand what they're doing and if they don't quite know they can find a resource to help them move forward mm -hmm. um, and part of that is you know there's a lot there was a lot of math anxiety and I'm not good at math and so I think we're well aware of the growth mindset and what what that can do for a student who doesn't think that they can do math that you're not there yet but we got to keep trying and that um, students talking about math is just a wonderful window into learning about their understanding because if they're just taking it all in as a teacher you're not able to really see where their misconceptions are mm -hmm. where they're they're having challenges so really that um, you know discovering mathematics and talking about it really helps the teacher help the student learn better. The other thing I've noticed from, from my vantage point um, is the level of engagement that um, math educators in our district are being very intentional about it feels different than when I was a child. Mm -hmm. I mean uh, just very bluntly that it was um, sort of you got it or you didn't and engagement wasn't actually part of the equation um, and it, it does feel different in the classrooms you know that we have currently at the 7 through 12 level and I, I you know some research I, I've done in a different setting looked at successful countries uh, so countries that have successful math education programs mm -hmm. and they weren't doing the just right. skill and, and drill work um, endlessly that didn't seem like it netted Mathemati future mathematicians or students who felt um, competent in mathematics and, and to your point raised earlier that you know avoid the math anxiety piece um, mm -hmm. so I appreciate your leadership on that in our district uh, what do you enjoy about being a math educator what's fun for you about your job oh it's so fun every day <laughs> <laughs> no it really is um, you know I think if you're into math you're um, a problem solver by nature yeah. and so the classroom is just a wealth of problems like you know how can I get this kid to move forward in this area um, how can I challenge this student so it's just it's very exciting every day um, and kids um, sort of speak their truth and so <laughs> it's uh, wonderful to see someone you know change their attitude about math and move forward in it mm. Yeah, and have that light daily. bulb go on. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it can. That's great. I would say the same, really similar, in that uh, I love it when I can hear the different uh, opinions and thoughts that my students share with me. Um, they share some really unexpected, really insightful um, ideas and questions and strategies and things that you may not have thought of on your own and so it's really nice to just have that discussion with and just be able to talk about math I um, mean the problem solving aspect is definitely one of the places that I, I love being able to do math puzzles and yeah. and try out different uh, patterns with my students and getting to see sort of the aha moment when they they light up and they're like oh yeah I get that this it's exciting yeah and I think that um the problem solving really reveals for students that there isn't always just one right way and that can be mm -hmm. a real um, you know positive way for students to engage in mathematics because it's like oh I didn't quite get what the teacher was saying but I have my own strategy to get there so mm -hmm. yeah. it's pretty exciting that one way. of the neat things that I got to see so I, I taught fifth and sixth grade as a teacher and I love teaching mathematics for a lot of the reasons that you both cited and one of the neat things last year when we were doing some professional development, and Tiffany, you remember this, this was more at the um, sixth grade and, and then seventh, eighth grade level, was someone who was coming in working with staff presented a problem, and it was an algebraic problem, but it was a kind of word, a picture problem of there were scales and there were multiple balls on each yes. scale. Mm -hmm. And the question was, you know, how would you go about solving this and how would you go about teaching your students to solve this? And I got to see it twice. I got to see it with seventh, eighth grade teachers as well as the sixth grade teachers. And position with that problem, the level of excitement and enthusiasm mm -hmm. in the room to not only solve the problem, which was fairly easy for the right. teachers, but to talk about how you would approach it. It was just, it was really exciting and what came through so clearly was our teachers, uh, both dedication to the craft, but also thinking about, well, they were thinking of specific kids and for this child, I would approach it this way. And they, you know, so I was so impressed with how much the math educators knew their children and knew the content and were trying to marry the two of how do we get it, but um, you know, that was supposed to be a warm-up activity that the presenter had to say, okay, we got to move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, there are things to do today, but right. just the level of enthusiasm of yeah. our staff was, was fantastic to see. 
What are some of the challenges that you find when students, you know, come to the secondary level and teaching mathematics that you have to work through? Um, do you want me to go? <laughs> sure. <Okay. laughs> well, it's such a variety of students that enter at the high school level. Um, so that is a challenge, trying to meet all the students' needs in, in the high school within our resources and trying to um, <clears throat> make sure that they can move through to their highest level by the 12th grade so that they are ready for their career or to go to college um, and beyond. So I, th I would say that's the biggest challenge. So intervention throughout is really, really important because if a student gets stuck on something and it never recovers from that, that can impact their um, algebraic learning because if they don't have number sense, um, then it makes it almost impossible to learn algebra. So just the variety of it, um, we have students that come enter our school district at all levels, so we didn't have a lot of control before they got here, and so trying to um, teach them the way we want, want them to learn mathematics is always a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, students come to us at, at the secondary level with a variety of different um, backgrounds and experiences with math, um, and so some of those experiences are really positive and others are not so positive. And um, sometimes trying to counteract those negative experiences and making them see that they can have a more positive experience can be a bit of a challenge. Um, and I think the other thing that can be really challenging is just making sure that each student can see themselves as a math student, and being able to recognize that even if their love is art, that there is still um, value in being able to um, think through a, a math problem or think through a math situation and being able to connect it to what they love. You know, both of you touched on something that I, that I think a lot about, and, and I think it hits acutely at the middle school level, but I think there's applications throughout, is that what some don't know is that you know, our students who enter at seventh grade are coming from multiple districts, not just multiple schools, but multiple districts. Not all of them share the same math curriculum. Um, and then we have students who come to us just because their family moves here, or they may have been in a different school before they hit seventh grade. And, and the nature of math is so cumulative, um, not that other subjects aren't, but I think it's, it's more, more so perhaps in math than some other subjects taught at the elementary level. It creates a real challenge for you all of how to approach incoming right. students. Um, right. And I know that hits you at ninth grade too with students coming from different schools as well. Right, and it's really hard to get students to go back into their math education as ninth graders <laughs> because they don't want to be working on that. You know, they, it feels funny to them to have to go back and relearn something in a different way so that they have a more solid foundation. Right. So that's very, very challenging. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It's also really valuable for mm -hmm. them to do so. And so when they recognize that it's something that really benefits them, right. it's definitely worth it. Yeah, great. So there's been significant curricular changes uh, this year. And so before we get into how's it going, um, not everyone <laughs> may have been perhaps attuned to those changes last year. So maybe I could start with Tiffany and then sure. and go to Jane. Just, you know, what curriculum were, was being used, uh, what curriculum is being used, um, just so people get a sense of that. I think it'll help contextualize the next sure. part of the conversation. Um, I'll talk primarily about seventh and eighth grade, yeah. and I know that the sixth grade is also using the open up curriculum, um, but prior to this year, um, the seventh and eighth grade um, curriculum was primarily um, a, sort of a whole resource of teacher created materials and the Big Ideas textbook. It really, all of our materials were related to the math um, curriculum frameworks for Massachusetts. And um, this year, we're using the Open Up curriculum, which is a really highly rated um, program that is available. Um, we have the workbooks, but it's also a free um, access curriculum for students and families online. And uh, the foundation of that program is really just to get students to be able to access the curriculum from wherever their background is and think about ways in which they can apply what they already know to a new situation and use rich discussions to promote their thinking. So it really focuses on those practice standards that we um, really want to, the, the math habits that we want students to be able to engage in each day. Great, thank you. Jane, can you say more for the high school? Yeah, so we moved from um, an integrated program, interactive mathematics program, and moved to a more traditional sequence, um, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and we're using the college preparatory um, 
mathematics program. And it's based on the um, standards for mathematical practice as well as integrated the content standards from Massachusetts. It's been around for a long time. And it is um, run by teachers. There's a lot mm -hmm. of teacher input into the changes that are made within the curriculum. Um, so, and there's been great training with it. So that's, that's where we are, <laughs> two and a half weeks in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think it's a challenge to say overall how's it going, but I think to the last point you mentioned, I was just curious if you could share a little bit of the training and the um, sure. professional work, you know, not only with external people, but with right. internal people that, we, that has been supporting the shift. So I think one of the goals of changing the curriculum was that our um, teaching practices would be similar through 6 through 12 so that students would have a common experience moving through um, that support the practice standards and the content standards. So last spring we had a joint middle school high school math meeting and we shared we had just adopted the program so we had shared what we knew about them at that time mm -hmm. and we talked a lot about the teaching practices and I know that um, people had piloted it um, the open up resources in the middle school and so they were able to talk about their experience and we could tell them how their experience sort of matches what our students will be doing in our program mm -hmm. and then um, this summer we had the high school met with the curriculum professional development person from the CPM resources and we had um, four meetings and they will have four more this school year so there's a lot of support professionally for this and they will come in and they'll observe a class and they'll give feedback. So it's it's pretty rich resource for professional development. Great. And the same at the middle school in terms of, of receiving professional development in the months leading up on, through uh, last spring and then over the summer being able to meet as a department uh, both with the high school and with the elementary school sixth grade teachers uh, so that we are as a middle school, um, ensuring that our curriculum is aligned so that students coming into our school and then students leaving our school feel like their math experience is it's, it's more, I guess, consistent or aligned with what um, they will expect to see and what they've already experienced. Oh, and I wanted to add that we have a um, 6 through 12 curriculum coordinator um, for the year who's going to oversee sort of making sure the teaching practices are similar throughout the 6 through 12, making sure um, teachers that need support implementing the new curricula, um, there's someone there to help them. They have the time to do that, answering parents' questions. Um, so it's exciting to have that person in place. Yeah, and I think it's important to note um, that it's someone who has been a teacher at the high school for quite some time in the district. And so I think has a local, my, my vision, my experience is has a local expertise to understand mm -hmm. not just the curricula, but also the teachers, mm -hmm. the environment, uh, and the community, because mm -hmm. um, all those have to match. Right. Um, so, um, no, thank you for sharing that. And what are, um, I think it's, it's a significant significant shift for staff members to be, even despite all the support you shared, to be taking on a new curricula. Um, and I just didn't know if there was any impressions that you had or that you were comfortable sharing about how staff are, you know, supporting each other and managing the shift. Um, regardless of their level of enthusiasm, it's, it's just on a day-to-day -day level, um, doing something for the first time can be really challenging. There's lots of discussion happening at the middle school. I, I, I bet it's the same at the high school as well. Um, but just daily, um, we don't have um, meetings every day, but we do have um, department meetings uh, monthly. And then we also have grade level meetings every few days on our seven day rotation. And during those meetings, we're able to talk about you know, how are things going in your class? When you did less, lesson three um, well, how was it received in each of the classes that you taught that lesson and what are some things that worked really well and, and we're able to sort of use that to fine-tune our lessons and, and have some good discussion and share some resources and there's also a, a sort of a Facebook page where we can get insight from other teachers who may have had more experience of working with this curriculum for the last couple of years and we're sharing ideas that way I'd say there's a high level of excitement um, among the staff implementing it um, that collaboration is high, that we really try to um, 
teachers make an effort to meet in course groups if they can't meet all together at least so that students are having again a common experience they can talk about issues that came up we have a page where we everybody writes in like questions um, the coach from CPM weighs in occasionally on mm. that as well so that's been a great resource we all share things when we've tried something out you know you might get an email I tried this this is what went really well this wasn't so well right. you know if you have a comment on it let me know because we we don't have weekly meetings so um, we kind of just find the time to do that but I would say everybody's enthusiastic and everybody's collaborating on it and really trying to make it work fantastic so one of the last questions I will have time for is uh, a question in every subject when kids hit the secondary level but I think it's particularly acute at, in mathematics, which is, you know, families often struggle of how much support to offer their child mm -hmm. um, at home when, when kids are very young and perhaps are learning how to read. There's a very natural feeling of how that could go. I think as students get older, based on whether it's the students themselves or also the feeling of not wanting to support adolescents mm. too much and, and create a dependency model. So I don't know if you had any advice of um, how families can support their children in mathematics at the secondary level and what are some things that are helpful and perhaps what are things that um, aren't so helpful? Um, that's a tough question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the program we have online has homework help for every question. So that's a great feature because it kind of takes the onus off the parent to do that. Um, but asking the student what they did in class mm -hmm. is always a great way to start the conversation. Um, and then if they get stuck on the homework, to remind them there is that homework help that they can go to. Mm -hmm. um, and really what we're looking for is completion, not perfection. Right. So mm -hmm. if they got stuck, they should circle that and we can go over that when they come into the class. Um, but just really keeping a positive attitude and not, you know, if they weren't good at math, don't say that. Just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> be positive about it and say, you can do this, you yeah. can get it. Encourage them to come for extra help, short times, you know, not right before the test, they didn't get anything. <laughs> like, coming continually is really, really important. And to, um, in our program, the homework is mixed-based practiced work which means that three of the questions are gonna be about what we did in class, the rest is review. So mm -hmm. if they didn't understand one of the review questions, they should get in and ask their teacher for some extra help yeah. on that. That's like more cumulative review that's built exactly. in. Exactly. Hmm, that's yeah. great. This is really strategic and, and, and well planned in, in both curriculums. Yeah. It's also the same with the open up curriculum. So having um, access to it online, there's also there's a student tab, but there's also a family tab where um, family members can get just a snapshot of what is that unit about and what are some of the key ideas and vocabulary. Um, and I think one of the best things that families can do when they're helping students is rather than trying to be the answer giver but mm -hmm. really teaching students how to use the resources that are available to them so what questions can you ask what mm -hmm. notes do you have from class that could help you with answering this particular problem tell me something about the strategies that you learned in class and which one of the strategies was really helpful for you let's try using that strategy right now um, getting students to really think about how they're approaching the math I think is probably the most valuable thing that families families can do for them rather than um, necessarily getting a particular problem on the homework correct. Because again, we're looking for completion and effort and the way they're thinking about it rather than accuracy as much when it comes to practice with homework. And, and I think um, just emailing the teacher, mm -hmm. like if things, you know, <laughs> if, if it seems to be a struggle, just, you know, keeping lines of communication open are really important. This was fantastic, thank you. I know this was a, a large interest of our community over the last few years and certainly last spring as we were in the curriculum adoption phase mm -hmm. of this. And um, sometimes, ironically, when you actually adopt the curriculum and it's implemented, the, the interest, the public yeah, interest right. goes down, but the personal <laughs> interest of the students, the families, uh, and certainly the staff goes, goes up. And so I really appreciate the care and time that you all are putting in as leaders in your schools. Um, and we look to see the impact it has on student achievement um, as well as um, staff feeling, as you said, enthusiastic and collaborative uh, about the work. And, uh, you know, I, I say that we'll, we'll keep on, I'm sure you'll get a lot of questions at open houses mm -hmm. and curriculum nights, yeah. uh, and that'll continue. Uh, but really the whole, the whole, all the changes that could happen and all of our interest in making sure all students' needs are met couldn't happen without teacher leadership. So I just want to take a moment to thank you both for 
your role in that. There's other teacher leaders as well yes, who I know have been connected, but, uh, but your, your roles have been central, so thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Well, thank you for your support, yeah. and I really want to thank you all the teachers that we work with because oh, they're wow. incredible. Yes. Um, you know, every day, thinking about every student, so. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, so that is our latest episode of Window into ARPS. Thank you for um, spending some time talking about math education. We'll be back soon with future topics, and have a lovely day.